Good morning. Well, today is July the 11th. It's about 5.30 a.m. Slightly behind schedule, kind of normal for me. Yesterday, I was out hiking and I walked past an absolutely stunning and beautiful location. It was a location that was a happening then location. What that means is you can go back today, you can go back an hour later, you can go back a week later, and it's a totally different scene. But yesterday, a farmer in his tractor with a big red wagon, he was harvesting a hayfield, rolling up into the hills, a row of trees along the skyline. It looked absolutely beautiful. It looked beautiful in the sunlight at the time of day, maybe even my frame of mind. Quite often when I'm hiking, I have no camera with me, which is fine. I scout and I do that a lot. Um, a recce, if you will. Uh, but we're going back this morning. Let's see what we can find there. Let's see if we can reproduce what we saw yesterday. Let's see if there's even anything there today. Is the red wagon there? Is the tractor there? Is the farmer there? I don't know. But hey, it's Gary here with Gary Clayton Photography. We've loaded up some gear in the van. We're going to blast off. We're going to head south. We're going to take a look. months ago I bought a new vehicle a van the one we're in right now uh, for the business I needed the extra space especially when I'm setting up photography shows and so on there's a lot of um, framed images tables tents um, lots of things certain shoots I go on I have to take lights backdrops again lots of things with me so uh, the van works out really really well for me but within two or three days of me buying the van, my girlfriend of a very long time, um, her vehicle, her car, it died a nasty death, had to go to the scrapyard, it was gone. Now, I said to her at the time, I said, okay, well listen, I've just got the van, you use the van for a week or two, till you get yourself sorted out, get yourself into the car, I'll use my small car, that will be fine. Well, here we are, um, a year and two months later, and I finally got my van back. Yes, I did. Last week, my charming, lovely girlfriend, she went out and she bought herself a brand new Kia Sorento SUV. Great. Awesome. Glad she did. Got my van back. So, hey, we're out in the new, for us, new company van. Sometime today, I'll give you a quick video tour of the van, show you what I've done with it, show you the lettering on it, the kind of van it is. So we'll kind of throw that into today's video. Anyhow, we're heading south. We continue to our destination, uh, which is actually on the seventh concession of Sunnydale. Uh, so that's where we're going. Let's continue. It's going to be a beautiful morning. One of the reasons um, that I really like to get out there hiking uh, on kind of wreckies and so on is because when I'm driving my car, I simply just don't get to see things like I do when I'm on foot. When I'm walking, I get the time just to walk slowly sometimes, walk quickly, whatever, stop, take a look around. I look up, I look down, I look left, right. Most of all, I look behind me uh, and I get to see everything. Well, today, I'm out in my car. Oh, you know what? I think I did just find it. And the, um, okay, what I was going to say is I could not find the location, but I just found the location, and that's okay. That's great. But what I've noticed already is the tractor and the red farm wagon are not there. Uh, we're going to set up, we're going to take a good look at the location anyhow, and we're going to see what we can make of it. Okay. So stand by. So right here is at the location 
This is where I walked down this country road yesterday. Uh, as I just mentioned, the, um, the red uh, farm wagon isn't there. The tractor isn't there. But let's take a little look. There's a little kind of entranceway here. And you can maybe see from the field in front of us uh, where they were harvesting this hay field yesterday. Uh, you can see maybe the red barn up in the distance on the hill. Um, I am using my GoPro Hero 5 Black today, so it's a little, I can't zoom in that well, but anyhow. And then a small hill rising up to a, a little line of trees. Now, this is what caught my eye. I'm with the red farm wagon uh, in the field, in the scene, and the tractor. Um, well, it looks really, really, really interesting to me. Um, again, it's something you'd see as you walked uh, along the trail or the path of the road. It's not something you'd pr probably notice if you drove by. Um, and again, it is behind a row of trees which are directly behind me. The sun is coming up to my left. I'm pointing to the south right now. And we are having some nice morning light on that rise of that small hill, the red barn and the trees. So I tell you what we're going to do. I think we're going to set up, we're going to set up a tripod uh, and we are going to capture an image of this anyhow. Why? Well, because we're here and even though it's not, um, it's not as magical as it appeared to be yesterday, it's still, it's a very nice kind of Ontario country image. Um, so we're going to grab that image. Or we're going to try to capture that image. We also have the drone with us, so you know what? I think we'll pop up the drone right now. Poof! So yeah, the, um, the drone footage was kind of interesting. Uh, it gives you a little oversight of the area and what we're looking at and where we are. Um, it gives you a perspective that, you know, unless we're a bird, we're just not going to see every day. Uh, so I always like to, it, well, when I can, I like to incorporate some drone footage into my videos. Um, again, just to basically show you what's going on around here. Anyhow, uh, we're back in the field. We've got the tripod, we've got the backpack. Uh, so we've got the camera and so on. We're going to just move over to this, to the uh, east side of this field. Um, just to give us a little better view of the red barn in the distance, the small hill and the row of trees, which is basically what we came here to, to capture. So let's move on over here. Oh, there goes my backpack. That's what happens when you stick it on one shoulder rather than two. But anyhow, we're going to move over here. We're going to find our location, our composition that we're looking for, and we're going to set up. So hey, let's get the tripod set up. Let's get the camera set up and let's talk then about what we're doing. Okay, so we're set up on the tripod. now. Oh, there's a deer running through the field. I don't know if you can see that, uh, but there's a deer just running through the farm field. He's now stopped. He's way too far away for me to capture an image. Um, but if you can see him, he's way over there. Um, no point me putting my finger into this image because I couldn't uh, 
be accurate with that but I am going to try to put a marker on there but yeah the little deer was just running across the field now he's stopped and he's it's a long way away but he's actually looking at us and you know oh there he goes again he's bounding off now and he's just bounded off into the field into the bush or the trees hey good for him so that's one thing we mentioned oh, a few videos ago sometimes when we're out we do get the opportunity of some really interesting wildlife uh, again not particularly a wildlife photographer but you know what I would never turn my nose up at a wildlife shot and it is something that I'd really like to spend more time at also um, well I'm really more than anything right now just waiting for the Sun as it rises to the east or to my left uh, more light is moving across this recently harvest field and as it's doing that um, it's, it's just making the image kind of glow with a golden morning light and I kind of like that I didn't bring no bug spray today um, right now early here in the shade where I'm stood the bugs are horrendous just biting the heck out of me and as I'd mentioned earlier I, I got my van back but I left my bug spray which I always have in my other car but anyhow that's okay uh, where was I okay so I'm set up on the tripod today I have my Canon 5D Mark II uh, right now I'm using my 28 to 135 mil lens but we are going to change that because I'm all the way out to um, 135 mil so I'm really compressing this or bringing this image closer to me bringing this image in we are a long way uh, from the actual subject matter but it is a pretty kind of scene a, a wider scene um, but we are going to go probably shortly to the uh, 70 to 200 mil which is a Sigma that I use uh, it's not the Canon but it's the Sigma uh, which is a which is fine it's a good lens um, so yeah it's really quite pretty we have a focal length of 135 mil um, we have an ISO of 100 f8 1 125th of a second here's my composition two second timer and there is my shot now okay um, again nothing amazing but on the last video we did or maybe the one before the last we had talked about Ontario and we talked about how beautiful and it really is beautiful like this scene this morning is beautiful there's no doubt about it but again as I said before extremely difficult to photograph because it's all beautiful it's all the same it's consistent there's no character there's no beautiful ugly or pretty and ugly um, there's simply no contrast um, it's all the same it's flat it's mundane pretty beautiful yes photogenic not so much but still this is where we live this is where we are and this is what we photograph and just for a point of interest um, the local people and tourists alike they do like this kind of image it's the image they buy I I set up during the summer months base well basically from May till the end of October I do uh, two times a week different kind of uh, venues where my uh, framed printed and framed landscape landscape images are offered for sale and and what we're looking at right now is a prime selling kind of vista or scene are the local people the tourists they do buy those images um, really quite well uh, so yeah and, and this year is no different again it's it's July and, and I'm having a great selling season so yeah it's good it all adds up to generated an income from photography which is something we've got to do a video on again too is kind of an update to to my uh, how to create how to generate an income from photography because it does change a little bit um, and my circumstances changed a little bit uh, so that is something else we're going to do a video of okay let's go back to the camera here enough chit chat uh, maybe let's recompose there's also an area there that I like uh, the last shot I took was in a um, 
a landscape or, or a horizontal orientation, but I am thinking of changing to a portrait or vertical orientation just to isolate the red barn and that little row of trees on the hill um, because that could be quite nice. So we're going to go ahead and do that next. Okay. Uh, so for now, right this minute, just staying with the 28 to 135 mil lens, I did just put on one uh, soft edge graduated ND filter. Now, just for a point of interest, um, I'm using the Corklin system or the Corklin system of filters. Um, I use those. I know a lot of guys are using um, Nessie filters. The price point is really kind of high on those for me. Being a working photographer, money is always important and how I spend it. But I find the Corklin filters very good. Um, for me, they're fine. This is the best set I've ever had. It's a relatively new set. I've only had this particular set of filters for about uh, three months with this particular mountain bracket, and I'm very happy with it. Uh, easily changeable. Everything fits fine, and it does a great job. As the sun's rising, the sky behind the barn and trees is getting brighter, and that's why I just applied or attached my graduated ND filter just to kind of help bring out a little bit of contrast in that sky because what you can't see because of the morning haze in that haze there is a little bit of contrast as far as a little bit of swifts of linear cloud is concerned and I wanted to try to bring those into the image again to add some more background interest above and beyond the trees and the barn so that was my aim there and that's why I applied the, the end graduated ND filter Okay, so I'm going to change over to the 70 to 200 now, and we're going to try a couple of shots with that and see what we can get from that. Let's change the lenses, and see what happens. Okay, now, <clears throat> as the morning's progressing, it really is becoming quite interesting. Um, even though the scene we're looking at isn't kind of a knock your socks off, blow you away kind of scene, it's still pretty. I'm glad I'm here. I'm always glad I'm here when I'm out with my camera, that's for sure. But anyhow, we've changed over to the uh, 70 to 200 mil lens. Now, I did get an email the other day about uh, my 70 to 200, so I will explain something right now. First of all, you will notice I have it mounted uh, to my tripod on or by using the camera lens, uh, the lens mount itself. Um, this is a Sigma. It's a 70 to 200. It is an f 2.8 and it is stabilized. This lens is really quite heavy. Um, and my, my email was in regards to somebody had picked up on the fact before that I used a f 2.8 and stabilized for landscape photography. And did I need that or did I feel I needed that? Well, the answer to that question is no, not for landscape photography. I don't need that. Unstabilized because it would usually be on a tripod anyhow f4 would be fine and it would be half the weight of this lens but i do shoot a lot of weddings and this is a very important lens for weddings so is my f2.8 and so is my stabilized or my stabilization uh, two items that i do need for shooting weddings uh, hence this particular lens and rather than having two of the same um, one stabilized and one not and one f2.8 and one f4 no couldn't justify that financially um, so yeah, that'll answer that question from that email, by the way. Hopefully that gentleman's watching today. Um, so yeah, we've set up again with the 70 to 200. We have still our two second timer. Now, as the morning's progressing and it's getting a little brighter, uh, F8 ISO 100, we're now at one two hundredths of a second. Now, just only 15 minutes ago, we were at 1 125th of a second, all other settings being the same, rather than the focal length. The focal length I have brought in all the way to 200 mil. Again, I have a two-second timer. There's my shot. Hey, you know what? Um, I have no idea if that's going to turn out. I have no idea what it's going to look like. Um, in fact, you guys are going to get to see it before I do because I'm going to pop that image up right now if we've got anything at all to look at. Now, 
I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to try another shot again with my graduated ND filter on this particular lens because right now I just have the hood on. One little thing too I should mention, usually when using your ND filters, uh, depending, I do sometimes use a circular ND filter, which I really like, but it's a circular um, variable ND filter, not a graduated filter. Um, so it changes the whole image and uh, not just part of the image. Um, but when I'm using that, I can still use a HUD. When I'm using my normal or my, my caulking uh, system, I can use no HUD. Um, sun flare on the lens can be a huge issue. It was in my last video when I was shooting the sunset. Uh, but anyhow, just a little point there. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put my graduated filter on. We're going to... Okay, so again, now on the 70 to 200, we've now attached the graduated ND filter. Uh, the same one we used on the last lens, which was the 28 to 135, and that's fine. You'll notice, or you may notice, I've lowered the center, tri uh, the center uh, extension on the tripod. This particular tripod isn't a top-of-the-line tripod, and it does let me down. It was letting me down right now with the, the length... Uh, I guess, what would you call that? Would you call that like a weight and balance, if you will, of the of the lens with the heavier lens on and the longer lens? Um, I could feel, I could actually see the, when I depressed the shutter uh, button, even with a two second timer, I could still see the camera actually uh, teetering slightly, just moving slightly. Uh, that's why I dropped that center uh, extension, just to give it a little bit more rigidity and make it a little bit more of a solid tripod. A new tripod, um, is um, on the shopping list. As soon as the budget allows that, then the new tripod will be here. Something a little heavier duty uh, for out here and doing what we're doing today. But anyhow, so we're all set up. Focal length of 200 mil. ISO of 100, F8. Now, with this graduated filter on here, we're actually getting one 125th of a second. Two second timer. There's my shot. Now what I'm going to do is, I also want to bracket this shot. It is on manu in manual, so I'm doing it manually and I'm going one stop over, depress the shutter release, two second timer. There's my one stop over exposed. One stop under exposed. Again, two second timer. And there's my shot again. So that gave me three images exposed. One stop over, one stop under. Those in Lightroom, I will blend together to create an HDR image. And whatever we get out of that image, we'll take a look at right now. Okay, so uh, we're heading back through the field now. Uh, you can see the country road uh, behind me. That's the one again that we were hiking down yesterday when we actually noticed this particular scene or this landscape vista. Um, <clears throat> hey, you know what? As always, it's been a blast. Um, I am going to show you my van today, by the way. But as always, it's been a blast. Had a lot of fun. I don't have a lot of images to show you today. Um, normally, if you're a regular viewer of my, of my YouTube channel videos, you'll know that I can put up 5, 10, 15 or even 20 images of a particular shoot. Well, today we just sh came out to shoot this one location. It's really just two or three images, different compositions, different lenses, different perspectives uh, and different kind of uh, light circumstances as the sun was rising with and without graduated ND filters. So hey, um, we are at the end of this video going to take a look at those images again just to recap. I encourage you guys, you know what, make sure you get out there, capture your images. One thing I get quite a bit is um, emails, questions about cameras. Well, which camera should I buy? You know what, uh, different people, oh those mosquitoes are just eating me alive. Note to self, damn, wow. Note to self, take a bug spray from old car to new vehicle. Yes, um, anyhow, uh, to those people that ask me what kind of camera should I get? Well, think about what it is you wanna do. Importantly is, well, how much money can you comfortably afford? One little tip I will give you is this, buy the very best that you can afford. 
don't go over budget you know but if you can afford three or four hundred dollars then three or four hundred dollar camera it is if you can afford a thousand dollars obviously you're going to get something a little better um i do recommend you know there's good friends of mine shoot mirrorless and there's nothing at all wrong with that but uh i personally like my full frame dslr cameras that's what i like i've shot crop sensor i've shot uh, i've shot uh compact cameras especially for underwater photography i still use a compact underwater system sometimes but i do prefer my dslr uh, for underwater um i would recommend you know what i'm going to kind of go out on a limb here and people will disagree i'm sure but i'd still say um a full frame dslr camera and if you can uh if budget's an issue rather then the canon 6d is a great entry-level full-frame camera i have one of those myself as well as my 5d mark ii don't be too afraid of buying used but if you're not 100 percent sure what it is you're buying and how to check things out then stick with new i'll go with somebody that does know what they're buying um but definitely in my opinion as humble as it would be I'm going to say a full frame DSLR camera. There, I've said it. Hmm, I'm sure some people won't agree with that, but that's what I like anyhow. Okay. Now, yes, I thought I, as I promised, my, my van. Well, here it is. This is my van. Now, this particular vehicle is a 2008. Um, it's a Pontiac uh, Montana. It has a big V6 uh, engine. Uh, it has a tow bracket on the back. It's very, very, very capable of pulling a, a heavy trailer or anything like that I need. You can see I have my advertisements on my van, uh, Gary Clayton Photography and so on. Uh, people do see that, Gary Clayton Photography, weddings, family portraits. Uh, that's primarily what I advertise. That's where a, a majority of my income comes from. I have most of the seats taken out. I have three seats left in there. I have a lot of space for storage. So, hey, that's my new van. If you see it out and about, please say hi, honk your horn, give me a wave. You know what? Again, as always, it's been a blast. We're going to sign off now because I babble sometimes. We're going to take a look at, again, a recap of those images from today. And we'll see you next time. Bye bye.